everybody out there in Bass Player Land. I'm Adam Booker coming with another review today. Today I want to talk about the Crevo Magnetic Bass Pickup. This is made by Jason Flores out of Portland, Oregon. It's a fantastic little pickup. It's a magnetic pickup, which you'd normally associate with electric bass playing, not necessarily upright. But here's the thing. Magnetic pickups have been used on double bass for at least 30, 40 years. Uh, the one person that comes to mind immediately is Niles Henning or Sed Pedersen, the great double bass virtuoso. And if you listen to his tone, you realize that there's a little bit more of an electric edge to it, and that's what the magnetic pickup does. It gives you a little bit more electric edge to it. The benefits of this is that it makes you louder. Yay, louder. Now, is it my bass but louder? Is it the acoustic sound of the instrument but louder? Not really, but it's really close, and I actually like it a lot. I've been using it for gigs for about the past month and a half, and it's been really helpful. So I'm going to go through some examples. I'm going to let you hear how it sounds both direct into the uh, Zoom Q8 with a backup band. Thank you, Pete Erskine, for your wonderful app. That's a great app, by the way. There's great isolation, so I can actually practice bass. So how exactly does this work? Well, if you notice, it fits on the end of the fingerboard using industrial strength 3M Velcro. This isn't like Velcro on your, uh, you know, grade school kangaroo shoes. This is actually hardcore Velcro. It's very stiff, doesn't move around a lot. Uh, once in a while, I hear a little bit of noise. I, th I think it has more to do with just the humidity factor. You can kind of hear the little bit of that sound but it's also a very quiet pickup I have not, not detected any hum whatsoever so you mount it on the end got the poles right here that's these guys right here underneath each string and they're adjustable that's what's really neat about this so once I have it mounted on the end here in a position that's suitable for my needs I take this little allen wrench and when you first mount yours on if you decide to buy one of these things you're gonna notice that each string is a little bit uneven that's okay. Jason thought of everything. These poles actually are adjustable. So you can adjust the height of them. And the height adjusts the, uh, the amount of, I guess, activity or how much magnetic field is being generated above. The more magnetic field, the louder the pickup's going to be or the louder each individual string is going to be. So you can actually adjust each string and get you a nice even tone all the way across. It's actually really good design. So in this example, I have the bass running direct into the Q8 from the Phil Jones head that I'm using. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
wanted to give you an example of what it sounds like when you actually include the acoustic element of the instrument itself and the acoustic sound of the room. Now, I'm in a pretty small room. I had to crank things up pretty loud, but hopefully you get a sense of what I'm talking about here. Remember, it's not just the sound of the pickup that your audience is going to hear. They're going to hear the sound of your bass, too. <laughs> There's a couple of main reasons why I decided to go with this pickup. The first one is I visit a lot of different high schools around the area as part of my job at UMD. Uh, a lot of different jazz bands do a lot of different clinics and, and uh, demonstrations and talking about playing bass. Um, now most bass amplifiers are not actually designed for upright bass. Big shocker right there. A lot of bass amplifiers are designed for electric bass. Ergo most of your high school jazz bands around here have amplifiers designed for electric bass. So what that creates is a, an impedance mit, mismatch. So basically the signal that comes from your average piezo pickup that you'd use on an upright bass like your Gage Realist pickup or the Revolution Solo 2 or any of those other piezo element pickups is a completely different thing than what the amplifier itself is expecting on the input. So having the magnetic pickup actually makes my life a little bit easier. I could just walk into any high school jazz band hall and just plug right in and it's good to go and I get a consistent tone all the time. And it pretty much sounds the same. Don't have to worry too much about EQing. It's, a, it's really made my life a lot easier in that regard. Now as far as using effects are concerned on the double bass, that's one of the reasons why I bought this pickup was so that I could actually run it through my effects board. I've got way too many effects for a double bass player. But you know, sometimes you hit a song and here's an example of me performing uh, Polar Lights by Simon Garcia uh, from his uh, short bass pieces for uh, called Three for Teppo. Teppo, uh, great bass player, a European bass player, and Simon's a fantastic double bassist and composer. I really liked this song and I really felt like at the same time, man, this would sound cool with a little bit of reverb and a little bit of phase, so I hope you dig it. Here's the Crevo going through my effects board. A little bit of phase, a little bit of reverb, and yeah, maybe some mood lighting too, just because, you know, why not? <laughs>
So one of the things I really enjoy about this pickup is how well it works with others. Uh, right now I've got it run into a Headway EDB2 and also I've plugged in my Gauge Realist pickup. You've heard that a couple times in a previous review or two of mine. Um, I just wanted to highlight that for you because for me the Realist pickup is a little bit too open, a little bit too indirect of a tone. Uh, at least it's been like that case in a lot of gigs for me. And then sometimes in a lot of gigs, the Crevo is just a little bit too direct, a little bit too clean. So when you're thinking about mainstream jazz applications, put the two together though, and I'm actually in a pretty good headspace for playing. It's a, it's a great sound. I really enjoy it. <laughs> by itself on just about any gig but you know like I said big box of crayons want to have all 64 right it's not exactly the most Arco friendly uh, pickup out there personally I haven't found many pickups that are Arco friendly to begin with uh, some get a little bit closer than others this one not quite as close as say maybe a gauge realist or a Shirtler Dyna B pickup or any of those contact mics that are out there and they're great and they're on the market today but, you know, life's a compromise sometimes, and you have to figure out what it is that you need at the moment. That's why I have a Realist pickup and a, you know arsenal of microphones and things like that that I can use. So I can get that sound when I need it. And that's another aspect of this pickup that I, that I enjoy. It's just another crayon in my crayon box. And when you were a kid, did you want the 12 crayons or did you want the 64 crayons? I wanted the 64 all the time. So maybe that's why I have so much gear lying around. So anyway... Uh, here's an example of me playing this through a bow. There's a little bit of room mic involved, and actually, you know what? I'll do one with the room mic and one without the room mic so you can hear a difference. All right, hang on. <laughs> some kind of steel core string. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using Tomastic Spirocore Weich Gauge. Uh, I'm a Diodario artist, however, so normally I have uh, Helicore Pizzicatos on that particular base. Any steel core string will work. If you're using something like Diodario Zyxes with a nylon core or Belcantos from Tomastic, anything like that, they don't quite have the, uh, the, the iron content in the core of the string to be able to produce a, a, a tone within the magnetic field of the pickup itself. So please, don't put this on your bass with Zyxes and go, ah, where's the sound? Because it's not gonna happen. That's not how magnetic pickups work. They need something to be magnetized, right? I thoroughly support small businesses and I thoroughly support entrepreneurship and creativity. I really like the pickup. The big takeaways here, really clean signal, really direct signal, very versatile. You can take it um, and put it on just about any amp and it sounds pretty close to the same every time. I actually really do appreciate that. Um, blends well with other pickups and microphones. Uh, blends well with a band. Cuts through a band like butter on a really loud gig, or as we call it in the upright world, the stupid loud gigs. Um, sound, it gives you that really cool Niles Henning Orsted Pedersen tone, especially up in the upper register. Think Mark Johnson, think Eddie Gomez, those kind of sounds. Uh, really big fans of those bass players myself. So it's great to you know take the sound that I grew up with and actually apply it to my own instrument. So thanks again, Jason Flores. If you have, want to look up Crevo Magnetic Pickups, just go on the internet and look up Crevo Magnetic Pickups in your Google machine or whatever search engine your choice is. And I uh, hope you subscribe to the blog. Hope you're all having a great day. Get back out there and go practice and check out the Crevo Magnetic Pickup if it sounds like something that you're into. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.